So here's the last area that we're going to be looking at for this, at least for this episode, and this is the stress cracking. The area here is, at, is relatively small, but since we're going to be painting this, uh, this surface here, it's still enough to, I guess, cause problems and well, at least make me a little bit nervous about not taking care of this because if this actually comes back and prints through the, after we paint, I'm going to have to come back and redo this. And, well, and I don't want to. Because we're inside of a building, I don't want to come in and hit this with a grinder and get fiberglass dust everywhere. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my sander with some 80 grit paper and just coming in and spending a little bit of time, because this is such a small area, just coming in and, and really grinding this down until we have uh, enough material removed so that I can lay up at least two layers of, of CFSM and be able to sand that back down and still have some of that fresh material you know, uh, remaining. Now that we got some of this removed, it's pretty much just what I expected to see. Typically when you in an area where you see stress cracking, it almost always happens on radiuses like this. And the reason for that is radiuses are hard to get glass laid into. And if you can get the glass to wrap around, a lot of times you'll get air, you know, air trapped in there, you get little voids, bubbles, and that sort of thing. And those voids are, uh, or those defects are weak spots. So what I'm gonna have to do in order to make sure this, this doesn't happen again, is all these areas that I kind of circled in here with pencil on the close-up, those are, those, well, you can see through the glass, that those are basically, there's voids underneath those layers of glass. So I'm gonna have to come in and I'm gonna try and chip as much of this away as, as possible and uh, give, it a, give it a nice sanding, smooth it all over, and then I'll come back in and lay up all my glass <coughs> to, uh, to, build that, uh, to build all this back up. For this, I'm gonna be using polyester resin rather than, uh, rather than epoxy for a couple of reasons. One, because the, I, I want a fast cure. I want to be able to get this thing, I want to be able to get this area turned around yet today. Also, the reason I'm using poly on this area is because this is a, this is a radius here. And the, uh, the polyester resin is going to work better with the chop strand matting and make it more pliable. It's going to make it conform easier to this curve. So that's, uh, that's the plan. All right, so I've come in with a Dremel tool just to kind of clean this up a little bit and taper off some edges and ground everything down. Now, there are still some very small little pits in here, and so I'm gonna come in with some, some of that uh, paste gel coat, that same fairing compound that I used for filling in some of the chips and, uh, and voids on those panels down on the bench. And I'm just gonna come in with my finger, and just to fill in the pits, I don't wanna get any kind of a buildup on here, because I want this to be built up with glass, but I do wanna fill in any of these little pits so that when I do lay up my glass, I'm laying up on a solid uniform surface. I'm not creating another, or trapping another void uh, on top of my laminates. Now just to reiterate, this stuff does not have any strength to it. This is a, this is a fairing compound, you know, and that's, that's really all it's for. It's for doing cosmetic repairs and surface fairing, getting the shape right. Okay, so I think that's mixed up pretty well. Just gonna throw a little blotch there, and a little blotch there, a little on my finger for good luck, and then we're just forcing this in. Again, like I said, I'm not looking to get any kind of a buildup on here. I don't wanna create a skin with it. I just wanna fill in the pits. So I've sanded everything down, and as you can see, I pretty much removed all of the, the compound that I laid up, with the exception of the low spots, and those are the areas that you see are in white. So now I'm just gonna start shredding little pieces of glass, and this is gonna be kinda tricky. It's a lot easier to shred larger pieces of glass <laughs> than little ones. So I'm just gonna tear them all out to begin with, and then uh, get them all laid up here as quickly as I can. So what I'm going to be using here is what's called a laminating resin. And what that is, is a, it's, it's a resin that doesn't have any kind of a wax additive to it. Polyester resin needs to be, the, the top layer needs to be sealed away from the air so that it can fully cure. If it is not sealed, it doesn't, it doesn't get, uh, it, it stays tacky. You know, it's, it's a laminating resin. It stays tacky for that next layup. So because I, I know that I'm going to be coming in and having to do more and more layups, 
Uh, I'm going to be using laminating resin, and to be honest, I never use anything but this. If I need to go ahead and, and cure it afterwards, I'll come over with, with gel coat and with, with a, an additive built mixed into it, and that'll create the airtight skin so that everything can fully cure. Polyester resins get mixed uh, generally at a one to one and a quarter percent of hardener. And the hardener that you use is what's called MEKP, or methyl ethyl ketone with peroxide. So I'm gonna mix this up, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix up small batches. I'm gonna probably pour in about an ounce of resin, and just to get that one to one and a quarter percent ratio, that generally falls uh, to about 10 to 12 drops of hardener per ounce of resin. And one other thing, whenever you're dealing with resin that's been sitting for even just a few days, just shake it up really good. You want to mix up all of the, the solids that are into the resin. Diff different resins are different colors when they come out of the can, but when you stir it with the hardener, you should see eventually, you know, within 10, 10 seconds or so, you should see it change, the resin itself change color. If it does not change color, then you don't have enough hardener put in. And if it changes color almost right away, then you've got too much. And the first thing I'm going to do is just wet out the surface so that my glass has something to kind of make it stick. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start hitting these low spots and just drop it in and wet it out. And again, using the same kind of technique as we did with the resin, you tap the resin into the glass. You don't necessarily brush it into the glass. Otherwise, you're just going to end up moving your glass all around and, well, it won't go where you want it to stay. So, tap it in. And I'm not, I'm not loading on the resin heavy at all. Just enough to wet it out. And uh, that's about it. I don't want to have a resin-rich layup here. Because, again, remember... Polyester resin has very little strength. It's actually very brittle, which was part of the problem with uh, this original layup, which is why it broke. There was just a heavy layer of resin in here and not much glass. So it's brittle and, well, it just cracked. And also, too, once you get to the point where you've got enough material laid up, if you're just pushing things around and it's starting to create a little bit of a headache for you, just stop, let it, uh, let it set up a bit, and then uh, continue on. And just by eyeballing it here, it looks like I've filled them in fairly well. So, and I'm happy with the layup. I don't have anything, any, any bubbles in here. I don't have anything kind of sticking up. So I'm just going to let this start to, start to kick off and tack. And then I'll come in and start laying in my bigger pieces here. And uh, well, the time, now it's time to start building. So I've let this sit now for probably about a half hour. And it's, it's set up, but it's, it's still sticky, as it should be, because it's a laminating resin. So I've gone ahead, poured up roughly another ounce of resin. And I've already kind of pre-torn a lot of the glass I'm going to be laying up here, at least for this batch. Now, the pieces I'm going to be laying up here, they're going to be a little bit larger than what, uh, what I started with. But I'm going to still kind of focus in on this area through here that we dished out, I guess, the deepest. Because that's, uh, I'm looking at it here, and, you know, it, it's still a little low. So there's still quite a bit of buildup that needs to be done. Most of it is through here. So I'm going to focus in on this area and just kind of wrap around and slowly work my way out towards the edge. I'm just going to wet the surface a little bit so that the glass has, I guess, something to stick to. There we go. Start with the smallest pieces first, work our way out. And at this point now, I feel pretty comfortable that I've gotten enough glass laid up on those low areas. So now with these little or smaller chunks, I'm just kind of eyeballing the areas as to, you know, what, what spot looks low. And that's, that's where I'm going to be laying my glass. Now, another nice thing about, by, about tearing this, uh, this glass 
is that when you're laying up little chunks like this, the little hairs kind of inter, interweave themselves and lock together. So you, uh, even though you're, you're working with small chunks, they all, the ends kind of lock in together and kind of give similar strength characteristics as if you were laying up larger pieces. Just the smaller ones are easier to, to work with. And I'm going to keep on adding this until, or adding glass, until it looks like it's about the, to the height that I'm looking for. Maybe a little high. Um, it's, it's, it's safe to assume that when you're doing this, you're going to be coming in with some fairing compound on the top surface just to fill in little pits, dimples, low spots, and uh, you know the, any little defects that are on the surface. I mean, that's, that's just a given. We're going to get the glass, you know, get the glass close, but not too much, otherwise you're just going to be setting yourself up for a lot of sanding. Let the fairing compound give you your finished surface. And I'm there. I'm there all the way across. Except for this little spot right here. Laying some really little chunks. Well, little chunks focusing on this outside lip here. And I'm just going to do one or two layers because I'm going to let the fairing compound do the rest. There's still, there's plenty of strength here now with all the glass that's been laid up. There we go. Take a nice close look to make sure we don't have any air bubbles trapped in here. And if we do, we just work them out the way that we did before. Kind of tap the brush and slowly walk them out towards the edge. So this looks really good. I'm, uh, I'm happy with how everything is laid up. I don't have any air trapped in there and I've got enough glass so that it's the, the height wise, it's, it's built up so that I'm gonna have a little bit of sanding, not a lot of sanding. And then the, the finished surface will then be brought back into shape with, uh, with the fairing compound. So I'm gonna let this sit up for probably a half an hour or so until it's tacky. You know, it, it'll be as cured as it's going to get without having a, a finishing resin put up on top. Okay, so our glass is set up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a, a, a top coat on this to seal it off so it cures. And like, like I mentioned before, what I'm going to be using is just some regular gel coat. Now, I do mix, because gel coat is a polyester-based resin, and like, uh, like most polyesters, unless they, polyester resins, unless they have a, a wax additive in there or something along those lines, they don't cure, which is what makes them laminating resins. So... What I've done is uh, I, I use gel coat and I, I use a product that's called Duratec, or it's made by Duratec, but it's their high gloss additive. And I use that for all of my gel coat projects. Now, with, uh, with, with, when you're working with gel coat that uses this Duratec, you, you mix it a little bit differently than you do most resins. Uh, if, you, if you recall, most polyester based resins are mixed or are catalyzed around one to one and a quarter percent. When you're using the Duratec product, you have to catalyze at a full 2%. So I've mixed up uh, probably about, uh, let's just call it about an ounce of gel coat. And I did about a quarter to half an ounce of the Duratec. You can mix it 50-50. Um, sometimes I do, most of the time I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, for this, uh, let's just say I've got about an ounce and a half here. I'm gonna throw in about 20, 24 drops of mech. And then I'm just going to brush this on until it's fully coated and that'll seal everything up and it'll be cured by morning. And then stir this really, really well. Scrape the sides of the cup, scrape the bottom. You want to make sure everything, all the gel coat in here gets thoroughly mixed. Oh, but it's not going to cure. You're going to have a mess on your hands. All right, so let's brush on our gel coat. And there is nothing technical about this. You're laying it on. And this is really nothing more than, this is just a sacrificial coat. I mean, this is, the only purpose of this right here is to make our fiberglass fully cure. That's it. It doesn't need to look pretty. It doesn't need to really do anything except seal off the glass. Although it does help to get enough gel coat laid up on here so that it's thick enough for it to fully for the gel coat itself to cure. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with gummy sandpaper tomorrow morning, or I'm going to be dealing with gummy sandpaper tomorrow morning. Gummy sandpaper makes me a little crabby. 
So we're, <laughs> we're gonna lay, uh, lay some up on here. And as far as the thickness of this gel to, to fully cure, you know, they say you need to have 20 mils of thickness. Well, you know, I, for the longest time, I'm like, well, how thick is 20 mils? And a good way to, I guess, a, a, a good example would be uh, five sheets of paper that you use in your printer. Five sheets is roughly 20 mils. So really not that thick. I fill it until it, uh, I keep throwing it on here until it actually fills all of the, uh, the print pattern in the fiberglass. And you know, then I know I've got enough laid on here. So that looks good. So I'm gonna walk away and leave this set up for tonight and then tomorrow morning I'll be able to come in, sand it down and more than likely just do a little bit of uh, fairing compound up on the top, shape in this corner here and we'll be, we'll be done with this section and then we can start looking a little closer towards getting our primer laid up. If you didn't want to use gel coat as the top, as a top coat on here to, to make the, the, the glass fully cure, you could always use you know, the, the, the laminating resin that we used for the fiberglass and then just add in your own bit of wax to it. It'll accomplish the same thing. I just find this is just easier and this is what I've, I've always got gel coat on hand. And uh, so that, that's what I use, but there are other alternatives. Well, let's see how we did. We laid up our gel coat last night. I let it sit overnight and good, it's completely set up. It's hard as a rock, so it's gonna sand really well. So I, I, I'm happy with it. I think it's gonna turn out nice. So let's uh, take some 80 grit paper on a sander. We're gonna keep the pad flat and just kind of work it around and see how it, uh, see how it turns out. So I think I finally got it here, and everything, everything feels really good. I've, I've got a little bit of a low spot here, you know, just kind of about this, about this long, from here to about here. But the back edge and the outside edges are, are right on. And I did come in, I used the, the, a little Dremel tool, and I kind of overly dished a little route right on the, right on the, uh, the edge of this seam here where the glass stopped and it's meeting up with the, uh, with the, the existing side here. What I'm going to do is fill in this little dished out groove with some fairing compound because that sands a lot easier than fiberglass. And there wasn't anything structural wise that was compromised by, by me dishing this out. I just went through the gel coat. So I'm gonna come back in, fill this little, little uh, divot in with some compound, sand that flat, and that'll give me a nice perfect transition coming onto, uh, onto the side here. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to see because everything, the whole surface is dark right now, so you can't really make all the little defects out. But I'll come in, give this whole thing a nice uh, thin coat of the uh, fairing compound, and sand it down, and we should be, this should be done then. And now I'm just going over the whole thing real lightly, just in case there's any pinholes in there, just to kind of fill them in and save me what might be a little bit of a headache down the road. Well, this is finished. And all of our levels are nice and flat. Just the way I like it. So this was the last spot that we were gonna be touching up, at least for this episode. And in the next show, we're gonna be going through and, and laying down the primer and starting the actual uh, process of, of kind of re you know, putting things back together and making it look good. So I hope you enjoyed this show. It, uh, I, ho I hope you learned something. If you have any questions about anything that you saw on here, please don't hesitate. Uh, visit our website, bullworkstoday.com, and uh, shoot me an email or leave a comment on the, on the video, and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for watching.